Hi yogis, Vanessa here from Being Yoga. This is a balance practice that might be a little bit different to what you're thinking. So it's a, a yin practice focused on our hips and our hips are uh, large, not not you, other people, but we've got lots of different aspects to them. So we're going to be focusing on quads and hamstrings, as well as the outer hip, uh, say for like a pigeon or swan pose that people get tight in. So uh, what's different is that we're only going to be doing three poses, but we're going to be doing them three times. So we do the right side and left side, and then we notice, well, which is tighter? And then we'll repeat that a third time. So we'll be doing um, the poses three times. So say for me, my left hamstring is tighter so I'll be doing uh, the left side right side and then redoing the left side for a second time to hopefully bring about at the end a sense of greater openness and balance more balance through the body so it might be a little different to what you've done before. We're going to start with the quad opening. So uh, yogi's choice either like this and lying back. So you'll be feeling maybe more of a quad opening through the inner thigh there or more like this um, virasana type shape and coming back. So it is entirely, I need to spin around so I can see the clock, uh, entirely up to you, but just taking some time to get yourself settled in and rearrange as you see fit. So trusting that you would take a variation that's right for you. I'll just show you the other option. Um, knee pain is the indicator. So if you've got knee pain in either of these, um, then you'll need to change and maybe try the other one. So you don't want any knee pain but you do want to feel an opening through the quad. So you stay there. Uh, I'm just rearranging so that I'm showing options here. And then find stillness. So staying with your quad opening and you may like to work with a, a lengthening of the breath, especially if this is a first thing in the morning practice. You may like to soften the key areas of the body, such as the jaw, maybe the hands, softening through the belly, allowing the breath to ebb and flow there. Good idea to try and be in stillness as much as you can. When you fidget, then you're basically arriving in a, a new pose and the clock resets. But since we're doing this together, we'll just be here for three minutes. I know I have a bug crawling on me, so <gasps> pardon. Oh. As the tissues start to unravel, feel a natural lengthening coming. And as that length comes, 
welcome it. Welcome it like you would an old friend. And maybe for the last few breaths, few moments here, let it be like this warm embrace with an old friend. And taking a little snapshot, you might already know which leg is tighter, but take a little snapshot of how tight this quad is before we come on up and we will go straight to the other side. If you need to come out and take a little bit of this windscreen wiper movement, you're welcome to do that. And then if you're able to, going to the same pose on the second side, however your body may not be up for that. So remember you've got that option of having being more in this crossed legs position, crossed legs position lying back or the foot folded back. And then settling in to feel for, in particular, the difference left and right sides. Rearrange the pose so that you can drop into that stillness. Begin to dismantle little bits of your gripping and holding sometimes especially with the quads they're quite um, important holding stabilizing muscles for us and explosive fight or flight muscles as well so just to let go completely may not be a game plan. It may be better to just little by little, breath by breath. Softening and surrendering. Maybe this time unraveling the tension and tightness from the neck and shoulders. Especially with the quad, I like to imagine just this open channel. And maybe it is just a, a little by little letting go, like ice melting and defrosting. Maybe it's like this gush of water down a drain pipe. Give it two more breaths here. And come out any way you see fit. We are going to be upright for our next pose, so you could take this little bit of 
rocking side to side. And then let's uh, do the hamstrings before we get to the, I haven't forgotten, before we get to the third repetition of our quad opening, but just note to self, which leg was it? And even write it down if you need to, but we'll get back to that. So stretching one leg out and uh, just be in like a tree pose here and folding forward and greeting the hamstring oh. and the doggy. Come on, you can come over here. Come on. I just sit with dogs and yoga mats. Come on. So some of you might like to support the head. Others might like to keep a, a spaciousness so that gravity, lucky not much is going on over here. Huh? Um, keep a spaciousness there so that there's room to move. Others might feel supported by putting a, a bolster or a block there for the support and in that support then maybe you can let go more. Perhaps utilizing the breath. Maybe it's that visual of the stormwater drain. Just draining away any of the obstructions, debris, blockages. And again, just giving yourself two more breaths, whatever that looks like for you. And slowly making your way up if you need a counter pose, a bit of a back bend. You could take a reverse table position or not. And let's go straight to the other side. So in particular, after the third time, we'll be taking a real inquiring moment to see the shifts and changes but for now if you can just going straight into this second side of the hamstring opening and remember that the everything is soft in yin so you don't have to hold on the leg doesn't need to be working. It's okay for the spine to be slightly rounded, though not if you have any disc herniation. You could use support or not props, hands. Yin is really an inquiry into 
really listening intently to the body. What does it need? How can I rearrange the pose? It certainly shouldn't look the same as my pose. The eyes are closed, as long as that's okay for you. And just this wonderful internalization. Again, just noticing the difference through the left and right side. And you might already know, but just, it's important that you really pay attention. So that as we repeat on the third time that it's really going to be a wonderful leveling out for you. You can then use your arms to bring yourself up. And taking a moment here and just locking away which hamstring was tighter we'll get to that in a moment but let's go back to the quads here and stretching out the quad in that same pose that we did a moment ago so i'm choosing this um, virasana shape and coming down so this is the third time and we've already done the right side and the left side we're repeating it the third time just on your tighter side so even as you go into it maybe you're already well ahead of where you usually would be And you might be able to take a, maybe a, a little bit further, maybe catching hold of the knee, maybe arms overhead. Just take these first few moments like a cat kind of pummeling the pillows to make it nice and soft. Just do what you need to so that you can then sink and settle in and since this is a, a precious moment that we don't often get to doing a pose three times <gasps> let's really go into it so feeling for the sensation maybe instead of the hard tight muscle you can just imagine it like warm dough pizza dough and that the skilled chef is massaging and kneading the dough and maybe with every exhale you can let go a little more separating the teeth and really letting gravity have its way with your leg. Let go. And 
and give it two more breaths maybe lengthening not only the breath but the tissues the fibers imagine them getting longer and longer almost like a cartoon muscle that might stretch way 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 more than your muscle just let it go and to come out you may need to come up first we will lie in shavasana for a little moment to see what this is like like a hose that's been kinked has been opened out feel hopefully that free flow of energy of sensation down the legs and that this transfers through the hips up the body So still remembering which hamstring is tighter for you and shelving that for later. But I hope you're feeling the benefits of this practice already. So we'll be taking this uh, eye of the needle shape, either this one here or I've got the wall, could use the wall as well for the outer hip opening. Alternatively, if you would like to, so I've given you options for every single pose. Alternatively, going into this swan position. So it's a saying of Deepak Chopra's that I absolutely love, that we've all walked through different gardens and knelt at different graves. Meaning we've all had different life experiences and metabolized all of those experiences differently. All our bodies have got this uniqueness, like a fingerprint, that rather than us all looking the same or doing the same pose, it's completely okay for us to have a unique expression, a variation. How wonderful, how liberating that is. Again, the caution with this is that you just don't want any knee pain. You should feel a little bit of a stretch, maybe through the adductor, through the inner thigh for some, through the outer hip for others. If you are holding the leg, then you want the hands to be as soft as possible. Not white knuckled gripping for dear life, but rather just this softness. One more breath here.
and slowly making your way up and choosing the second side so it's entirely possible that even you have different variations on the left and right side it's heaven forbid even that might be okay so just changing sides without much fanfare and remember after we repeat it on the third time we'll really celebrate that experience of balance it's something that we as yogis prize so much but often don't create the time and space such as a, a practice like this where we really strive to harmonize experience a greater presence whether it's a presence with the breath or presence with the sensation and hopefully an equanimity if you're in too deep then it can be too intense so better to back off and be at a place where you can Remain calm. Enjoy the quietness. Enjoy the stillness. remembering that knee pain is a bit of a red flag especially in this swan position so better to find a hip opening without the knee pain and that you can find a way to do that Give it two more breaths here. And then emerging. And again, we'll celebrate more party popper moments after the this third time third repetition so going into this half caterpillar position on the tight side so the whichever side your hamstring is a bit tighter than going into it here whether you need to bend the knee have a cushion or a, a, a bolster over you but just coming into position and welcoming in the stillness, the softness.
above all welcoming in the balance like a set of scales balance to precision precision like that day of the equinox that happens each March and September, the perfectly balanced days of daylight and night. Balance whatever that might mean in your life. Maybe it's a work-life balance. Maybe it's balanced care for yourself and for others. Just welcoming in this sense of, of balance and the ripple effect out give it two more breaths Recognizing far beyond this balance of left and right. But yet what we do with the physical body has this profound effect through our mind, through our emotions. And carrying that with you as you bring yourself up and take a moment in a cross leg position. the base of your body here being like the base of a marble statue so steady solid and grounded and now a little more balanced we have one more pose to do going into the swan or pigeon or the eye of the needle pose so repeating your tighter side before we take a shavasana so we've already done right side and left side going now towards that third time and this is our last pose for this practice And maybe after you've completed the third repetition of the other two poses, you can trust in my crazy wisdom and you're feeling a little more balanced and at ease. that you can go with it and I mean really let go dropping in deeper and deeper still
letting gravity have its way with you letting the stillness be so enticing in the presence that you're so deeply wanting to be intimate with this moment the sensation, the breath, the obstruction, the letting go Give it two more breaths here. And then you can emerge and again, as little fanfare as possible, just spin yourself over into uh, Shavasana and feeling for the difference feeling for in fact the balance again that set of scales balance to precision the harmony that occurs from this physical balance the mental balance emotional balance and celebrating it all celebrating the fullness the fullest expression of this balance in your body and being and in your life allowing it to ripple from you like a pebble thrown into a pond just this natural rippling out balance and ease You can stay in Shavasana as long as you like. Enjoy taking this balance with you out into your life. Deep peace to you.